Are you at the point now where you're ready to start tackling some projects, but you don't really know which tools to have on hand to get you started? Well, I was in the same boat just a year ago. I was ready to just go ahead and just start a project, but I didn't really exactly know what to keep on hand. Okay, so y'all have asked me to put a getting started guide together of just basic tools that I use for my simple projects. Gotta give the credit to AnnaWhite.com. The Her Getting Started Guide was very helpful for me. I'm gonna throw in a couple extra simple tools, but they're absolutely necessary, at least for me, to complete my projects. So stay tuned. Hey there, Christy here. Welcome. Here I'm saving money by just building things around my house myself and just learning how to do it along the way. And on this channel, I hope to inspire you that if this ordinary mom with zero experience can just build simple stuff, then you can too, while using simple plans and simple tools and keeping things at a fraction of retail cost. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'll start with phase one of the simple and basic tools that I keep on hand for just small and simple projects. Seems like a lot, but let me show you why they're necessary. Let's start with eye and ear protection. These little earplugs are nice because they don't interfere with my safety glasses. Next is the stud finder. I use it to locate the wall studs for items that are large or heavy that I need to hang or fasten to the wall. And white chalk to mark each wall stud. Next up are levels. I like to have a small level handy and a larger for larger projects. I like to keep mechanical pencils on hand because then you don't have to worry about sharpening them. Okay, next up is a tape measure. Do yourself a favor and get a tape measure that has the fractions in it. It will save you time and a headache, trust me. I'm always finding use for a hammer. And aside of a hammer, having a wrench and pliers have been great for me to have on hand as well. This Phillips head screwdriver is what I used before I started using a power drill. I like to keep a variety of clamps on hand for when I'm doing projects alone. It works as an extra set of hands. The rest of my clamps stay on my workbench. I think this clamp here is my favorite because you only need one hand to tighten it and you'll know what I'm talking about when you're holding a project together and can't let go to use two hands to tighten a clamp. Moving into phase two, let's talk about some not so scary power tools. But first, using my tool belt makes projects so much easier. Everything you need is on hand at your waist. I've enjoyed using gloves, especially when a project requires a lot of drilling. For example, the garage storage shelves, as well as the three six foot wooden planters. I would say these openings in the fingers are important so you can grab screws and nails easily. Power tool number one that we'll talk about is a power drill. Not only is it nice having a power drill on hand, but it's also nice having an extra battery on hand as well. Having two batteries means that there's always one battery on the charger. There's been too many times where I'm midway through a project and my drill dies. So being prepared will help prevent slowing down a project. Now along with a drill comes drill bits. The drill bits that I use most often are here and the drill bits that I use to pre-drill are located here. Some of them are missing because I keep losing them. I do have a smaller kit here, but I just seem to gravitate towards the larger one because it just has all the things that I need. Power tool number two is a sander. Seems like for the majority of my projects, I use 120 grit sandpaper. So let me show you how you change it. It's really simple. You just grab a sheet of sandpaper and fold it into fourths and you can either cut it or you can rip it like I'm doing here. So by phase two, you're equipped with enough basic tools to even build simple furniture. So having a sander on hand just makes sanding much faster. Lock the two side prongs in place and there's the power button. Also recommend having an extension cord handy as well. Before I adopted the miter saw that I'll talk about here soon, this miter box is what I used to make angle cuts. Another tool that I've loved learning how to use is this speed square here. When building and attaching boards together, I like using the speed square to ensure 90 degree angles, which is important for when I'm checking for square. Although I've only used this for two of my projects, I've seen a ton of DIYers that keep these on hand. This one is called the Craig Jig R3, and this kit includes all the drill bits to drill your pocket holes. Also the instruction manual and a good variety of pocket hole screws. Now let's move into phase three of my basic tools. Purchasing this nailer opened up a whole new world of future builds for me. I've borrowed other nail guns from friends in the past. I have to say though that this has been well worth my money. Seems like the more things that I build, the more clamps I seem to accumulate. These large bar clamps have been well worth it. Then moving into phase four, I just wanna talk about three more different saws. This saw here is called the jigsaw. Here you can adjust how curvy you wanna make a cut. I use this saw here to cut holes in the beanbag toss. 
as well as making small 90 degree cuts for when I did the palette wall and needed to cut around the electrical outlet. The last two saws that I wanna talk about were quite intimidating to me at first. When I began building about a year ago, I relied on the home improvement store to make the cuts for me. But the more projects that I did, the more comfortable I got in cutting my own wood. So this circular saw here, I like to use to make long cuts for cutting plywood, as well as even making small cuts, for example, when I did my board and batten in my guest bathroom. And lastly, once I became comfortable with this miter saw, this is the saw that I use most frequently now. I use this for 90 degree cuts as well as angles. You just grab the little handle here, move it from left to right to whatever angle that you need. A couple examples of where I made angle cuts were for my outdoor planters as well as the kids picnic table that I made for our patio. And then there's other basic things that I've accumulated over time for specific projects. For example, like this mallet and chisel that I used to remove the door jam for when I installed the barn door in my daughter's room and a utility knife to remove existing caulk around trim, a putty knife to apply things like wood filler and drywall spackle, a caulk gun to apply things like caulk and liquid nails, and of course wood glue and lots of it. And lastly, I wanted to show you this here. This is new to me. Not only can you fill up the pockets with tools, but you can also use this tray on top to put screws as well as put things inside the bucket. And the best part about it is once you close the tray, you can use it as a seat and use the handle to move it around. This came in handy when I was building three of those six foot long and narrow wooden planter boxes. And I was able to sit on this and access all the tools that I needed while working on the project at the same time. Thanks so much for watching this video. Detail are in the description box. Leave a comment below to say hi. I'd love to hear from you guys. Make sure to subscribe to see upcoming projects. And as always, if I can inspire just one person to maybe pick up a drill, then these videos are worth it. Keep tackling those projects and we'll talk soon.